Hi, and welcome to the 10-minute video summary of the message that was delivered at Henrietta Christian Fellowship on June 8, 2014. My name is Don Bold. I'm the pastor at Henrietta Christian Fellowship, and we're going to take the next few minutes to uh, share again the message that we enjoyed together uh, on that particular Sunday. So, Father, thank you today for the opportunity uh, over YouTube and the Internet to be able to share uh, this message again and with the understanding that, that people are going to have the opportunity to see it Listen to it and be blessed like we were when we heard it for the first time together. And uh, bless him, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So uh, we're talking about uh, moving from uh, responsibility to joy, okay? Turning responsibilities into joy. And, um, you know, there's a lot that in the Bible we are told to do. And at very least, uh, it's our responsibility to, to do these things, all right? But uh, as we... Uh, as we walk in obedience to God, there are different ways that we can uh, relate to God, okay? And so we're going to look at three model relationships that will give us a sense of how we're going to feel about how we're going to pursue uh, this obedience that God calls us to, okay? And uh, and so it's it's moving, uh, turning responsibilities into joy, and again, moving through these three phases of responsibility, the sense of privilege that I understand that this is a privileged place that I have, and then finally into a place of joy and uh, in, in being obedient to God. Uh, so there, there's these, th these three relationships, the servant, the friend, and the child. All right? Moses exemplifies to us the servant of God. All right? They sing the song of Moses, the servant of God. Uh, you know, we're, we're, Moses is called the servant. And, uh, you know, that was his relationship. God gave commands. Moses obeyed. Um, I think the relationship went deeper, obviously. There's uh, this, you know, he knew, he talked to him like a man talks to his friend. All right, so Moses did uh, know this deeper relationship of being the friend of God. I don't know that he necessarily had the revelation to, you know, grasp that God might be trying to draw him into a relationship as a child of his until Jesus came. All right, and Jesus, of course, was a prophet like unto Moses. All right, so there is this continuum that's there, uh, but I think there's more revelation yet to come about these things. And then he had the friend of God. Uh, you know, Abraham exemplifies to us uh, what it means to be the friend of God. When uh, God is going to destroy uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, he, he, he says, well, you know, Moses is my friend, or Abraham is my friend. You know, am I going to I, I do this without revealing to him what I'm about to do? And so the angels come and, and, and talk to Abraham and explain to him uh, what, what God's about to do in Sodom. And so there is this conversation that takes place uh, between uh, Abraham and these angels, one of them being the angel of the Lord or the Lord himself uh, appearing as an angel to him. And so you see the friend of God. Okay? And God calls us into this friendship. Right, we're going to take a little deeper look at that. And then finally, this idea of being the son or the child of God. Jesus, uh, of course, is the one who uh, shows us this and invites us into it because as many as received him gave he power to become what? The children of God, the sons of God. You know, that we can come into this relationship even by believing on the name of Jesus. All right, so these three relationships uh, that we can see. And then there are three different ways to respond to um, those things that God asks us to obey him in. All right? God gives us a command. We can respond to it at very bare minimum as, as a responsibility. Okay, I understand. God spoke. Uh, I'm to obey, and so I do. And uh, there are many religions uh, in the world that, uh, that focus on this whole idea of that God tells you what to do, you do it, and pretty much that's the end of it. You know, there's not a lot more to it in terms of relationship uh, with uh, what they conceive of as God. All right, but in, in our faith, uh, you know, that we are called into something deeper, into friendship and actually into the love of family uh, with God. All right, so let's, let's go through these, all right? So the servant responds to God's word as responsibility. Okay, Luke 17, verses 9 through 10 says this, He does not thank the slave because he did the things that were commanded, does he? No, so you too, when you do all the things which are commanded you, say, we are unworthy slaves, we have done only that which we ought to have done. All right? so, so the servant is responsible to do what they've been commanded to do, and when they've done it, they've done what a servant's supposed to do. Uh, Jesus uh, points out that uh, that's all that's expected of, of a servant, and at the end of the day, uh, there's no particular reward for that. Uh, you just did what you, you, you ought to do. All right? so then you, but then you have the friend. All right? The friend here recognizes the privilege of, uh, of knowing and serving. All right, that, uh, and, and, and Jesus describes this in John 15, 15. He said to his disciples, who he'd been calling servants, all right, he said, I, No longer do I call you slaves or servants, for the slave does not know what his master is doing, but I have 
called you friends, for all things that I have heard from my Father, I have made known to you. All right, so there's this uh, this revelation of, of friendship, okay, you know, being that, see, because the servant wasn't to ask. You know, if, if you tell a servant what to do, they just do it. They aren't supposed to say, well, you know, why are you doing that? Or, or, or uh, you know, explain to me what's going on here. The disciples had, had been doing that. You know, what, what did that teaching mean? And why are you telling them this? And why do you speak to them this way? And they would ask Jesus questions. And, uh, and Jesus had invited them into this relationship being friends with God, all right? And so the third is, is the friend, and they, they understand the privilege of it all, all right? Because they understand what's going on, and so they, they can understand this is a privileged place to be. And, and I think there's a greater enjoyment there. You know, I, I do my responsibility, and I feel fulfilled because I did what I was responsible to do. That's one thing. But then to go beyond that and to be able to participate in the joy of your master, to enjoy this friendship with God, that, uh, that then brings us to this higher place of, of appreciation that it is a privilege uh, to do these things. All right, and then finally you have the son or the child. And uh, the son or the child knows the joy and the privilege of serving uh, as God's child as part of God's family. All right, to understand that. That's, uh, you know, one of the people after the service told me, they said, you know, I'm, I'm listening to what you're saying, and it was really stirring me because I started realizing I really don't know how to be a son. I don't know how to be a son to God. You know, I had a difficult relationship at home growing up, and I don't really think I quite grasped, you know, what it meant to be the loved son. He said, and so this is hard for me to, to approach God this way. And so I'm going to be doing some more messages on uh, being a servant, on being a friend, on being uh, a child uh, of God. All right. So, uh, but here's the scripture, John 16, 24 through 27. Until now, you have asked uh, for nothing in my name. Ask, and you will receive, so that your joy may be full. These things I have spoken to you in a figurative language, and hour is coming when I will no longer speak to you uh, in figurative language, but I will tell you plainly of the Father. In that day you will ask in my name. I do not say that you will uh, that, that, you, that you will request of me in the, in the... Okay, let me read that again. Okay, in that day you will ask in my name, and I do not say to you that I will request of the Father on your behalf. For the Father himself loves you, because you have loved me and have believed that I came forth from the Father. And so this invitation into joy, to, to you know, that, you know that, that I, I give you this so that your joy can be full, all right? And uh, it says, the slave, this is 8, John 8, 35, okay, the slave does not remain in the house forever. The son does remain forever. So if the son makes you free, you'll be free indeed. And so to understand that the, the role of the son, the child of God, uh, is an eternal relationship, all right? The, the role of the servant, when the servant was done, uh, they, they were done. You know, they, I mean, Mo, uh, excuse me, Abraham had a, a, a steward that had taken care of his house. He was a great servant in his house. And at some point, he gave him a gift and sent him away uh, so that Isaac uh, could rule his house uh, after uh, Abraham went to be with the Lord. All right, so this idea of the slave. Now, I mean, the prodigal son, think about this just for a minute, okay? Um, he had been living in the house as the son of his father and had basically betrayed his father in taking his portion of the, the inheritance and going out and, and using it in shameful ways and living in riotous ways. And so he's on his way back. And what is he saying? Father, I'm no more worthy to be called your son. Make me as one of your hired servants. Okay, and uh, so he's on his way back saying, look, I, I understand. I don't have the right to be a son to you anymore. All right. And so he's saying, give me the role of a servant. And you're like, maybe like one of your hired servants and pay me for what I do for you and, and make that it. All right. But the father, it says, uh, ran to him as he was approaching fell on his neck and kissed him and put a ring on his finger, shoes on his feet and a robe on him, killed the fatted calf and had a celebration because uh, his son had come home and his son who was dead is now alive again. All right, and so uh, this idea of the son and the, and, the, and the servant and to understand that there is this greater place that God is calling to us, uh, us to in relationship, not that we abandon the other because as we're going to discuss in a, in a future message, one of the first things that a child is commanded to do is obey his parents. Okay, so, uh, so entering into this, this place of being God's child uh, is, is something expanded. But I want you to spend some time in the next week. Think about these things. You know, what kind of relationship uh, have you entered into with God? You know, the, the, the servant, the friend, the child. You know, what, how do you respond to the things that God desires for you to do? Do you look at them as, as responsibilities only? Are you able to grasp them as privilege? And finally, you know, have you come to the place where those things have become your joy? And with that, I'm going to say God bless you. We'll see you next time on the 10-minute video summary.